What if there were proven best practices that could transform the task of processing invoices from a cumbersome chore into a streamlined, efficient process? Best practices across the entire procure-to-pay chain are even more critical now with advances in technology and the explosion of new frauds. It's becoming easier and easier to exploit minor weaknesses in the accounting and accounts payable process that might have gone undetected in the past. Whether you're a diehard accounts payable fanatic or just a professional interested in accounting stuff or a financial controller who wants to make sure your guys get it right, you won't want to miss even one of these best practices. Make sure you stick around until the end when we address one practice. While it doesn't happen often, when it does, it will almost guarantee a duplicate payment that is impossible to find. That means you'll never get that money back. Sadly, those situations are occasionally fraudulent, and if they are, they tend to be repeated. So let's get started. Invoice best practice number one. Procedures for handling invoices should be standardized. Everybody should do everything exactly the same way. That way, if an invoice comes in today and I process it, and one comes in two weeks from now and you process it, you'll be able to identify it as a duplicate fairly easily. Invoice best practice number two. Annually, the manager should, should review the work of each processor to ensure compliance with those standardized instructions. Any shortcuts should be investigated. This does not have to be a big formal process. Just go, the manager or who's ever doing the review, should just go and sit with the processor, tell them just keep operating the way you normally would, and then watch how they do it. Um, are they using the standardized procedures that you've outlined for them, or have they integrated a shortcut that they've come up with. If they've integrated a, a shortcut, you want to investigate. Oftentimes, those shortcuts will make their job a little easier, but create a problem down the road. And if that's the case, if you have a control problem, for example, or someone else isn't able to do their job because of this shortcut, then you want to cut it off. You want to, you know, stop it. But if this shortcut turns out to be actually good, then you want to use it. You want to integrate it into your processes and make sure all your processes are using it. Invoice best practice number three. Centralize the receipt of invoices with one special email address just for invoice, a very specific snail mail address for those folks who are still mailing their invoices by paper, and a fax address just for invoices because some people are still faxing invoices. And ideally, by the way, if you do have that fax address, you want to tie that up, match it with an e-fax facility that will convert that paper faxed invoice into an electronic electronic document that's emailed and you can be processed from there. Um, which brings us to invoice best practice number four. Push for electronic receipt of all your invoices. And by electronic receipt, I mean either using your portal or your automation solution or, and this is how most of the invoices are coming in today, uh, invoices should be emailed. So you remember the separate address that I told you to set up. Invoice best practice number five. When selecting an automation solution, make sure it can read PDFs that are emailed in. That way, you don't have to harass your suppliers to change their process, which you know is always a nightmare. They can just continue emailing you their invoices as they have been doing it, and then you don't have to um, get them to change anything. Because as you know, getting a supplier to change is often not, different, not easy. Invoice best practice number six, ruthlessly weed out duplicate copies of invoices. Um, unfortunately, we're in a situation now where some suppliers have realized that email costs practically nothing and so they'll send multiple copies of the same invoice. This creates extra work for your accounts payable staff and if you're not really on top of it, it will um, also create a duplicate payment. So you want to be really ruthless about weeding out those duplicates. Invoice best practice number seven. You want to identify those suppliers who are sending duplicate copies of the invoice or triplicates or whatever um, and you want to a, ask them to stop but if they don't you want to double check all their invoices um, and in fact you can even tell them hey guys if you don't stop sending double copies we're gonna to have to put you on our special list that will uh, where we double check and you know that will probably delay your payment a day or two and they're not gonna want that invoice best practice number eight you want to have a coding standard and you want to insist that all your processes use that coding standard even if you are automated why because even if you're automated 
there's still a certain amount of manual data entry that needs to be made. There are corrections that have to be put in and you'll still be getting some paper invoices unless you're really, really lucky. And that you want your people to stick to the coding standard for the reasons that we used it in the past. It helps reduce duplicates. Invoice best practice number nine. When your processes are handling invoices, you want to use the three-way match so they can identify potential problems on the invoices. Okay, that's your best way of weeding out uh, invoices that have inaccuracies on them. And we've got several uh, other videos on the three-way match and I'll, I'll put a link to them in the description uh, in case you want to investigate that more. Invoice best practice number 10. Uh, when your processes are processing invoices, they're going to have some that have discrepancies and need to be followed. The manager should track this and follow up to make sure that these discrepancies are being resolved because if these discrepancies are not resolved in a very timely manner a second copy of the invoice will be sent that's extra work for you guys and sometimes those second copies get paid so follow up on discrepant invoices and if you can at all possibly um, uh, do so get them resolved before the payment date so that the payment is made on or on at or on the due date and then you don't get that second act copy invoice best practice number 12 when discrepant invoices are resolved um, and hopefully you're tracking this either in your ERP system or maybe in a spreadsheet, um, you want to make a note of the cause and then track this, as I said, in the spreadsheet. Periodically, then you want to go back and review it and see if you can identify root causes or root problems. Let's say you had 100 discrepant invoices and 25 of them had the same problem. Well, you want to look at that problem and say, what can we do to fix it? Oh, all these invoices were a uh, result of POs coming out of our Duluth office. Maybe our Duluth office needs um, a little more training on on how to put together POs uh, or whatever whatever it is okay so you want to fix the problems that are the biggest ones and also the easiest ones even if you only have two or three invoices with this problem if it's really easy to fix it just go ahead and do it periodically um, you want to do this analysis this is not a one-shot deal because even though you'll maybe do the analysis you'll get most of your problems fixed um, this redoing the analysis will help you identify new problems that may have cropped up and you know there's always new problems problems on the horizons, as well as, and this pains me to say, old ones that may have returned. Just because you think you fixed the problem once doesn't mean that six months or a year from now it's not going to be back. Especially if you have a turnover in staff, um, or there's a turnover in staff at one of your suppliers, because who knows what's going on there, and of course you have no control over that. Invoice best practice number 13. Invoices with early payment discounts should be tracked, identified, and fast-tracked so that you earn Earn as many of those early payment discounts as you possibly can. I had one accounts payable professional tell me one time, the only mortal sin in our organization is missing an early payment discount. The best financial return for your organization and you want to make sure you get as many of them as you can. And for a really selfish reason, if you're losing a lot of those discounts, you can better believe somebody in finance is going to realize it and do a little analysis and point it out at a time just when you don't need them to be pointed that out. Invoice best practice number 14. Insist, impli insist that your suppliers include the purchase order number on their invoices. Now you think they would automatically do this, and many do, but there are a few who don't. And that makes it more difficult for your processes to figure out who to send the invoice to for approval, and also to do the three-way matching, and also to extinguish the right purchase order. So if they don't include it, just send it right back to them and say, we need the invoice to include the purchase order number. Yes, that will take a little bit of extra work, but doing a little bit of extra work now will save you time in the future as they submit many, many invoices. You want them to have, so insist on the purchase order number. Of course, this assumes that you issued a purchase. Invoice best practice number 15. Once an invoice is processed and scheduled for payment, the related purchase order and receiving documents should be extinguished immediately. No waiting till the end of the week or the end of the month or when you have time. Immediately. That will make it less likely that if a 
duplicate copy of the invoice shows up, it will be paid. Before we get to the last few, if you're getting value from this talk, I'd love it if you would hit the like or the thumbs up button. It sends a message that you're getting value from this talk and I should make more like it. Invoice best practice number 16. Invoice processes should not update the master vendor file. You should have a separate person to do that because if your processes are doing it, it is a violation of the appropriate separation of duties principle, which is the bedrock of our strong internal controls, fraud prevention, and duplicate uh, payment protection. So your invoices should not be updating master vendor file. I know a lot of people do this. Um, it's easy, but it's not the right way to do things. Sometimes the right way is not the easy way, as I'm sure you've noticed before. Invoice best practice practice number 17. Don't leave processes handling the same accounts year in and year out. You want to periodically rotate them. This is because if they leave, you leave them on the same accounts, there's a chance that they'll become friendly with the processor on the other side, with the accounts receivable person, which is great if you have a problem, but not so great if the two of them become so friendly, they collude, and then they defraud one or both of the organization. So periodically rotate them. Along the same line, uh, best invoice practice number 18, require that anyone having anything to do with your organization finance Finances, and that includes processing invoices and the master vendor file that they take five consecutive days off during which time someone else handles their task. It's general consensus that if there is an ongoing fraud it will be uncovered during that, that time period. So don't let them do the job from home. That completely negates the whole purpose of having them take the five consecutive days off. Um, and invoice best practice number 19. Invoices should never ever ever be paid by an individual personally and then put in for reimbursement on their expense report. For if they do that, it will be virtually impossible for you to identify a duplicate payment because when that invoice shows up in the, um, you know, in the normal course of things, your processor is going to go process it, the purchase order is going to be outstanding, the receiving document is going to be there, and they're just going to go ahead and, and, and pay it. And as you know, very few vendors automatically return duplicate payments. So do not let anybody do that. And if they do do it, you make a big to-do about it and basically tell them if they ever do it again, they're not going to be reimbursed. And then immediately, immediately, immediately make sure the purchase order and the receiving document are extinguished and your accounting records are updated appropriately. Now, best practices uh, related to invoices are just part of a best practice operation in accounts payable and accounting. There are many other best practices that should be used if you want to run an efficient and effective accounts payable operation. In fact, we think this is so important. We recently completed a short talk on some other best practices, which you can watch right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.